What's up you guys? I'm Dan. This is Frugal Not Cheap and today we're talking about the folly of market timing. Hey guys, here we are in the home office so that I can show you a thread on the Mr. Money Mustache forums that I think will illustrate the point that <laughs> we'd like to talk about today quite well. So this thread, it's a giant thread. It's called Top is In. So let's jump right into it and we'll zoom in so that you all can read it a little bit better. Now, a little bit of background. If you don't know what the Mr. Money Mustache forums are, Mr. Money Mustache is a guy named Pete that is a software engineer and so is his wife and together they had uh, quite good paying jobs but not um, you know not like a quarter million dollars a year or anything like that uh, and they were able to save up quite a bit pay off a home and become retired at a very early age i think they were in their in their 30s one of the big drivers was so that they could spend time with their son so that's something that um, they were able to do which is pretty cool i think they were homeschooling him uh, he put out a blog with kind of a caricature of himself that's, you know, super frugal, thinks, you know, any kind of spendy pants ways are, are weak and, and not okay. I can't remember what his tagline is, something about financial freedom through badassity. <laughs> yeah, so, so a lot of DIY, a lot of how to cut down your expenses and your overhead and save very, very quickly. It, it really became very popular, and his blog is, I think, one of the big drivers behind the popularity of the financial independence and retire early movement, the FIRE movement. So he's a big driver behind that, hugely popular blog, and also he created some forums where a lot of people are sharing their experience. One of the great things about the Mr. Money Mustache forums is that it tends to be populated by very, very intelligent people. It does tend to skew a little bit towards the, the higher income, which makes sense though, because it gives you the ability to save very quickly and, and be able to reach fire much more quickly than if you have a larger proportion of your monthly or yearly income tied up in, in overhead. Because there's only so low that you can really get your expenses. Well, I mean, you know, there are all kinds of hacks and stuff like that, but for the typical lifestyle, perhaps without, you know, doing a lot of these big hacks, then yeah, they're only gonna get so low. And so the higher income, is then the much more room you can have in order to save quickly and retire early. So anywhere between you know 10 to 15 years say, uh, which is pretty wild. But anyway, these are the Mr. Money Mustache forums. And of course, because uh, Mr. Money Mustache himself, Pete, is uh, like myself, a low cost, broad index fund, set it and forget it kind of strategy guy. Then that tends to be the, the mode, uh, maybe the more popular view amongst Mr. Money Mustache people, but you always have people that break the mold. And I think one thing to point out here is there seems to be in a lot of people um, a desire or a tendency to uh, to want to optimize in, in a way that's irrational. They want more. They want to get more returns, do better, and, and they'll act on that desire even if logic seems to dictate that they can't. I have some other funny stories to tell you about in future videos, but today I think it's, it's a pretty amazing example. This thread is 147 pages long. <laughs> And it all got started by this guy Thorstash over here, uh, April 11th of 2017. And uh, Thorstash says, fear is back, VIX above 15, XIV breaking down, SPY to follow, earnings will be a reality check. And uh, the title of the thread is top is in, indicating that this, um, this user, Thorstash, thought that the top of the market was in and we were headed for a correction for prices to fall. So they're saying fear is back. VIX is a volatility index. So it's a measure of volatility that's actually traded. Uh, you can trade volatility. And so they're saying that the, this is high, which means that um, valuations can move a whole lot. I'm not sure what XIV is. Why don't we look it up? Because that'll be fun. Uh, not Final Fantasy, <laughs> XIV in the market. Oh, okay, so this is the daily inverse of velocity. Okay, I see. So it's basically, it's the inverse of the VIX, which makes sense, right? VIX, XIV, ZIV, whatever. Anyway, so you would use that in order to bet against volatility. If you thought the market had been very wild and would be quieting down, then you would bet on the ZIV. So 
for instance. And again, I don't advocate any of these kind of strategies, but the logic might be things are very volatile running into a presidential election. So you might go long the VIX at that time. And then as the presidential election is uh, resolved, then you'd expect things to quiet back down, all else equal. And so at that point, you might go uh, negative the, the VIX or long the XIV and, and maybe that would work out. Uh, personally, I don't I don't mess with any of that kind of stuff, but that's some logic that someone might follow. All right, and then the last thing that Thor, Thor Stash says here is SPY, uh, which is the S&P 500, I think, uh, right? Yep, the Spider S&P 500 ETF. I thought so. And we can talk about ETFs versus mutual funds and all that kind of stuff in future videos. Uh, but for now, this is the Standard & Poor's 500, which is an index of the 500 largest uh, companies by market cap in the US market. So he's saying that the um, these 500 companies, their valuations, their stock prices are going to be falling now and everything. We're at the top and things are going to be falling. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, the tea leaf pattern is auspicious this morning. So they're just making fun of them, I think. Uh, making fun of the idea of that you could, you know, do this market timing and really be able to call a top in the market. Very, very difficult thing to do. We have a saying from the trading floor. There's no trading floor, by the way, anymore. That's all gone. This is my home office. Um, I'm a commodities trader. That's, that's my daily job. In there, I'm also a hedger. I don't, I don't speculate. But anyway, so I trade NYMEX from home and this is, this is what it looks like, right? Uh, there's no more trading floor. There's no more open out crying and pieces of paper flying everywhere and all that stuff. Store stash says a confirmed downtrend from all time highs is anything but noise, fellow. <laughs> anyway, there goes support. So support is kind of a, a psychological or, or technical floor to stock prices where people think that prices won't be falling below that level. And if they do, then it indicates that things are really shifted and that, um, you know, the bears are kind of in charge. I spilled a bunch of ink. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that was terrible. I spilled a bottle of ink. It, it fell off this desk and cracked and went everywhere. I tell you, it's the hardest thing <laughs> to try to clean up. All right. So um, so support, he's saying that support has been taken out and so prices are likely to accelerate in, in their downfall. So we'll see. And that's what he's talking about with a breakout here. Although he's talking about the volatility increasing, uh, which again also means that the stock prices must be moving quickly as well and in a downward direction in this case. So we'll see, we'll keep going. Here's this little chart with the, uh, the uptrend in the S&P 500. And uh, he's saying that we've broken down below his price channel, his upward price channel here. This is a candlestick chart. And I'm not sure what the uh, moving average is here that he has in yellow, but anyway, whatever. He says prices were going up and now they're gonna be falling. So we'll see. And uh, oh, this is great, Heroes821. I love this thread. It's like watching a CNN ticker of nonsense. And then Eric says, it's modern day phrenology. <laughs> so you can see very, very strong uh, opinions amongst other Mr. Money Mustache uh, forum members that market timing is a fool's errand. Uh, looks like Max wants to get up. Let's try to do that, hopefully without knocking things down. Oh yeah, Max. Max wants to be in charge, in the command center. Doing the trades, doing the trades. All right, so Far From Fire says, I have no idea what this sentence means to you. Oh, he's asking Thorstash. If, if Thorstash knows exactly what, what the heck they're talking about themselves. Well, anyway, um, I do, I told you what it means. It does make some sense, you know, but uh, these things can, they can sometimes work in the short run, but in the long run, it doesn't work out. So maybe sometime I'll go into a little bit more of a, a foray of, uh, my personal experience with uh, with some day trading, with swing trading, and we can talk about that. But psychology really, really goes against you. So remember, in the backdrop behind all this stuff, the the baseline, the thing that we would normally do is just to buy index funds, in this case, say the S&P 500, and just buy and hold. Set it and forget it. As soon as money comes in that's investable, you have that invested automatically. And um, you know, if you find yourself at the end of the month with extra savings, maybe they need to invest that too. But that's the baseline is just buy and hold, reinvesting dividends. Uh, in this case, the S&P 500 index could be any other index. You know, We can talk about that more in future videos. All right. <laughs> Run puny humans, Terror Kitty has come to savage your markets. That's adorable. So Retire Canada is keeping some track a little bit. He quoted Thorstash, or he or she quoted Thorstash saying, top is still in, 
blah, 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 as it did not close the bar to the March 1 top, though it did just a couple of months later. So first of March close, we were at uh, just under 2,400 with a high of about 2,401. And then on the 9th of May, so a couple months later, uh, we breached those levels yet again, 2,403.87. All right, so let's keep going. <laughs> uh, oh man, get to the top. Uh... <laughs> All right, so now Thor Stash doubling down, or at least uh, not backing down here, May 11. The top has been in since March 1 and continues to be in. Failure to break out uh, created a double top on the chart, but the top is still in since it failed to break out. So he's saying there was a try for some new highs or whatever, and then a second try, but the fact that we didn't keep going beyond the levels of those two highs indicates that the top is still in, according to Thor Stash. So uh, we'll see, <laughs> right? Let's keep going. Let's see, the triceratops are in. Uh, double top is in. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is great. Oh, a little quick shout out to uh, the la our last video where we talked about not listening to the news. Uh, here's Retire Canada saying, I don't read financial media or follow financial news. I do read these forums and it seems people love to post clickbait a lot. I ignore it as much as I can, but I do occasionally misjudge things and end up on a clickbait site feeling like I'm getting stupider by the minute. So anyway, it's a nice hark back to both our um, the, the concept of clickbait and negativity bias and then also just not following the news. Okay, so the top is in thread is <laughs> very, very long and there's a lot of humor in it, but there aren't a whole lot of numbers in there. I found another thread a little bit newer that actually has some numbers that I think is pretty fun. We'll look at, uh, at this one. It's called, well, I'm going to take a stab at timing the market. <laughs> it's by Junior Oldtimer, and they say I remain long-term optimistic on the U.S. stock market, but I'm short-term pessimistic. I think the sitting president is going to be impeached, and there's going to be a knockdown, drag-out fight in which the markets temporary plummet as all this Russia stuff comes to light. Yeah, I'll let you guys know how I do. I intend to sell 893 shares of VTSAX, and that, if you don't know, is the mutual fund run by Vanguard, which reflects the total US stock market. I will buy back in when the price is significantly cheaper. <laughs> Current price for v VT Sachs, uh, $68.18. Says cross your fingers for me or call me crazy. We'll see how this goes. Let's see how it does go. <laughs> uh, people are wishing them luck. <laughs> Probably needs it. Okay, so here's his actual sale. February the 8th, Junior Old Timer sells 892.9490 shares at 67.59 each for a total of 60,354.42. Go Cubs go. Uh, just curious if this is a small slice of a larger equity portfolio or just a 5% gamble. Hopefully it was a 5% gamble. And they say, oh no, all the marbles in my taxable investment account. Oh, he's also got an HSA, 401ks, Roth, traditional IRA for another 100K? Oh no, oh man, so this is 60 out of 160K that he has total roughly. This is 37.5% of this person's portfolio that they're gambling. So people say, yeah, I don't agree with your logic, but thanks for giving us the numbers. So here we go, okay, Walt Works is starting to keep track. VT Sachs is now at 68.85, so OP is $1,125 in the hole. So we take the difference between the sale price and the current price and multiply it by the number of shares and then that's their loss so far. So let's keep going here. Tall Texan says, OP, I appreciate you starting the thread and being willing to take your medicine in public. To the rest, you guys should be gracious. Most market timers try to use sleight of hand to hide their mistakes mm -hmm, or mentally account for them as something else. Just be wary with a listening to people's advice or hearing them talk about their track record and that kind of thing. When I show you my numbers, we'll, we'll look at the real numbers and we'll see why I gave up on, on day trading. It was fine, but you'll see. All right, now Sol's chiming in a little bit more and says that, uh, let's see, the loss was 937.60, then 1100, and now just eight days later, he's lost $1,700. Market timing is fun as long as you're not the one doing it. Agreed. So there's 15 pages of this, which is pretty good. Not 147 like top is in, but pretty good. And I really like that there are numbers here. Oof. So after two weeks, a loss of 1866.26. And now on March 1st, ah, oh, a loss of $2,400. As of today, he needs the market to drop at least 3.8% to get back to break even on his decision. Still possible. Yeah, I mean, that, that's possible. 4% is not, not huge, but it's, it's not small, right? I mean, 
If you think about the long-term returns on VT sacks, uh, on average with dividends reinvested before inflation, so nominal numbers, I think you're probably looking at uh, around 11%. I think the S&P 500 is around the same annually. Uh, here we're talking about three weeks, <laughs> a loss of 4%. So just to give you a little bit of um, scale and context. All right, here we go, four weeks, loss is cut down to $1,000, not too bad, getting better. Uh, five weeks though, loss back up to $2,650. Ah, let's keep going. And one thing to keep in mind is it could have ended up working out for them. And, and there are obviously cases where you get lucky, but the idea that you can time this stuff and consistently beat the market and do well, that just shows that's just not gonna happen. And here's just a fun example of that. Expected value of doing this is negative. Let's see, now they're at a loss of uh, 1,700 after six weeks, but they missed out on dividends they would have gotten, so the loss is actually at $2,000. All right, so very nice of Seoul to keep track of this for us. Seven weeks, loss of $2,900. Let's fast forward a little bit. And so really the shame of it though is, you know, I read this stuff with glee because it's fun for me and it's interesting, uh, but I really do feel bad for them though, uh, to have missed out on all those gains with such a significant part of their portfolio. So please, uh, I hope, you know, you do what you want, but I wouldn't be doing this personally. Uh, here's an update from uh, Vader X7 guy, v V8er, oh, V8er, X7 guy. So we must have a Mazda X7 with a V8. So it's the one year anniversary and uh, yep, 60K in cash. On February 7, 2020, the closing price is $82.11, up pretty significantly from 759 where the guy bailed on the market, meaning that he had cost himself $12,965.62 after one year, plus $1,282.58 in dividends not paid for a total loss of $14,248.20. So let's put that in percentage terms, ouch. 1424820 out of the 63.5443, that's a 23.6% loss. That is, oof, that is a brutal loss on over 35% of your portfolio. So we'll keep going. Not too far. They would have looked like they recovered and hopefully they, they were able to come back in when COVID hit and the markets tanked at that point. Personally, I did some tax loss harvesting at that time. That was great. So <laughs> they were at a market this whole time and they were able to find a time, very lucky, that they were able to get in and uh, pick up a few more shares. That's good. That's good. So they actually, they, they, they made themselves whole and they had the cash earning some interest during that time. Ah, oh, good, I'm glad. So they didn't get totally, totally beaten, but you can see there are many, many, many times uh, throughout where, where they were and there was no guarantee that this was gonna happen. I mean, the only reason that they were able to recover was because COVID hit. Uh, so here's an update. Uh, <laughs> oh no, oh no. Oh, so he did it again. He did it again. All right. All right, so in his first one, because he got lucky and he had the money earning him some interest, uh, V8 or X7 guy says that um, junior old timer made $1,400 on his first trade, which is paltry uh, over a period of, um, what was it? Uh, a little over a year. What is that? 140288 out of uh, 6035443. So it's a 2.3% return. <laughs> So he, he might as well have just had the money sitting in, in the savings account for that period of time. So, eh. But then, oh no, so Junior Old Timer sells on March 27, 2020. So just after getting himself whole, they converted another 30K into cash. And uh, very quickly, so by June 5, they'd lost $7,000. And by September 1st, they'd lost $10,876. Uh, and then we have a total loss on their two market timing attempts. Now, oh, you'd think they would have learned their decision, right? They said, oh, this isn't probably a very good idea. Let's see if there are any updates after that. Nope, that's it. So that's the last update. Oh, poor guy. And I guess this time, hopefully they learned their lesson. So guys, just, yeah, definitely uh, market timing is a uh, fool's errand. Anyone that, that tells you they have a crystal ball or they know which way the market's gonna go, they don't. And it's possible that they'll get lucky because nobody knows, but the they're probably not gonna get lucky every single time consistently, right? So if, you're seeing that kind of stuff, probably something fishy is going on, like a, like a Bertie Madoff type of Ponzi situation, or, or I don't know, or a pump and dump scheme. So we'll talk about some more fun examples in the future. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you like this video, do hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos about personal finance, frugality, financial independence, and in the future, fingers crossed some travel, do hit the subscribe button. Also ring the notification bell if you'd like to see when new videos are posted. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.